All right, so remember our actual goal here is to identify the formula and the structure of our compounds. And so a good place to start with this is to take a look at your mass spec and infrared spectrum um, and pull out information to limit the possibilities of what atom or what molecule it could be. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this, right? So these are from the same compound and let's see what data we can pull out, right? Um, I would start at the mass spec and identify your uh, molecular ion peak. In this case, it's right here. You can see that this is at 98. Um, grams per mole. And so think about what that tells you. Um, it's an even number. And so no odd number of nitrogens. Um, it does not have that uh, three to one size peak for the chlorine with the M plus two peak. And it doesn't have two evenly sized peaks, um, two mass units apart. So there's no bromine either, right? So that's the information uh, we can pull from there. Let's check out our IR spectra now. Um, over here, we can tell there's no OH. So we know we don't have an alcohol in our compound. We do see this um, shoulder peak right here, which represents a um, sp2 carbon hydrogen bond. So we know we have something like this. And uh, over here, we also see the carbon carbon double bond as well. So we know we have some kind of alkene here. And then finally, we see a very strong peak at 1700. Um, and so we know we have a carbonyl. And so you can tell we've already gained a lot of information about this compound just from studying it. And so going back to our mass, we know that we have a mass of 98 grams per mole and we have a carbonyl peak. You can't have a carbonyl peak without an oxygen. And so we know we have an oxygen. So if we're thinking about formula, there has to be an oxygen um, somewhere in here. And so we can take this uh, 98, we can subtract out 16, which is the mass of the oxygen, meaning that we have another 82 uh, grams per mole to work with. If we then use the rule of 13, divide this by 13, we get six with a remainder of four. And so what this tells us that it could be is C6, H6 plus four is 10. And then O, right? We have this C6H10O. So we come down here. Next thing we're thinking about is our degrees of unsaturization, right? We have six um, carbons. That's times two is 12 plus two is 14. We only have 10. So we're missing two pairs of carbon. So we know we have two degrees of unsaturation. And then also from our IR spectra, we know that we have a carbon-carbon double bond with at least one H. And then we also have a carbon-oxygen double bond. Well, if we think about it, here's one degree of unsaturation. Here's the other degree of unsaturation. So we can have no more degrees of unsaturation, right? That means that no rings can occur and no other pi bonds can occur either. And so we can draw different structures um, that contain six carbons, one alkene, and one carbonyl, right? So maybe you could draw this, right? That fits in all the criteria, right? We've got an alkene, we've got a carbonyl, we've got six carbons. Um, or maybe you could draw something like this where you just move the stuff around. Right, that would work as well. Or maybe you can draw something like this. As long as it has six carbons, an alkene, and a carbonyl, it's a plausible answer, right? Remember not to add in any degrees of unsaturization, right? So if you draw something like this that has three degrees of unsaturization, so we can't, it can't be that. And so we can list a, a bunch of possibilities of what our compound can be, right? How are we going to tell which one it is? We're going to use NMR for that purpose, right? So NMR is really going to be a more most powerful tool, but mass spec and IR can give us a good starting point.